Ciao, Johan from Siemens. Sorry. Um, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, image uh, reconstruction problem using Gaussian process. So what's a boiler? Um, so don't be scared. Uh, boiler is very common. So for example, in our house, the water heater is a very simple boiler. But here we are talking about a, a very big uh, boiler. And uh, in this boiler, we burn fuels such as gas and uh, coal to generate uh, um, steam. And the steam will be used to uh, drive the steam turbine to generate uh, electricity. To operate the boiler efficiently, you really want to know what's going on um, inside this uh, combustion zone. And uh, for example, we want to know the gas concentration of oxygen and also the carbon monoxide. And uh, after we know these quantities, we can help to improve efficiency and reduce emission. However, the direct measurement inside this high temperature zone is not possible. So that's why people invent a laser technique. The idea is that um, you install two devices um, on each side of the boiler. So one is the transmitter, which sends out a laser beam. And the receiver will receive the laser beam and uh, process the value and uh, uh, generate uh, average, path, average value along this path. So now if we uh, uh, just uh, make it more mathematical, we are talking about a uh, computed tomography problem. So we have, uh, let's say we have M pass projections, averages. And our idea is that we want to um, reconstruct the image V here with N pixels. Here is a very simple example. We have a three by three image and we have two projections. And if we write down uh, all the equations, the first part is the uh, um, projection matrix. And uh, we want to reconstruct the image, which is uh, vectorized. And here we already know the uh, projections. So here, because the first pass will cross the first three pixels, so that's why each pixel will get a weight of one third. And the second pass cross the diagonal, so every diagonal pixel will get a weight of one third. And after we solve this equation, we can get the uh, pixel values. So basically that's uh, how the problem set up. So then how can we determine the projection matrix given the path? So we have two methods. In the first method, we treat each pixel as a rectangle, and we compute the intersection between a path and the rectangle. So for example, for this pixel, right, it gets the most intersection, so that's why the corresponding weight will be higher. Just keep in mind, because we are talking about uh, average value, so that's why the sum of each row should be equal to one. And in the second method, we treat each pixel as a point. Actually, the first, we can convert from the first method to the second method by treat the um, centroid of a rectangle to be a point here. And then in this method, we uniformly sample many, many points along the path. And we compute the bilinear weight of each pixel regarding every sample point. Then we sum them all up, and we get the weight um, for every pixel. In this paper, we use a, a second approach. So when we talk about computed tomography, there are huge uh, um, literature about this, especially in the medical domain. So that basically, we want to solve this equation. We know A and B, we want to reconstruct the image. So first, if we don't assume any prior knowledge about our image, right? Then we can just use a simple uh, linear algebra, do matrix inverse or pseudo inverse. Um, and later on in the medical domain, people use a filtered back projection and a Fourier transform. And, uh, um, and later they design this uh, algebraic reconstruction technique, which basically is totally minimizing this uh, square loss. The problem of this approach uh, is that usually they require a lot of projections and the number should be much larger than the number of pixels. Um, so later on, people try to introduce some prior knowledge, such as a smooth list constraint. The idea is that neighboring pixels should, should have similar values, so it's very natural. And uh, this can be achieved by a smooth list uh, basis function or by this uh, Tihanov uh, regularization. 
And uh, for these two methods, the smoothly is, is usually specified locally. So the only specified smoothly, smoothly is constrained for labeling pixels. Now we formally uh, formulate our problem. Mm. So first, we want to solve an image reconstruction problem, as I mentioned before. We know the projection matrix A. We know the uh, pass average B. We want to reconstruct the image. The second problem, we call this a pass arrangement optimization problem. In this case, we do not know A. So let's say you can arbitrarily arrange your pass, right? Which one will be better? So what, what do we mean by better? So a better pass arrangement should uh, help you produce a better image reconstruction results. So just keep in mind in practice, right? We are talking about a realistic boiler. There are many restrictions. For example, there are some forbidden zones on the wall which you cannot install the laser sensors. So we have to keep those in mind. So to our knowledge, we have not seen any prior work on this second problem. So we are going to tackle both problems in this paper. So we use Gaussian process. I think uh, probably everyone has uh, heard of Gaussian process many times in this KDD. So what is uh, Gaussian process? Basically, it uses multivariate Gaussian distribution to enforce a long range smooth list constraint. And uh, when we talk about the process, we have to know what's input, what's output. So here the input will be pixel coordinates x, y. Output will be pixel values uh, v here. So, uh, so we can write down the multivariate Gaussian distribution. M is the mean, C is the covariance. And usually people use this uh, squared exponential covariance function. So then what's the difference here, right? There are so many Gaussian process applications. So typically when, we, when people in machine learning um, area talk, using Ga Gaussian process, they are uh, tackle uh, um, interpolation or extrapolation problem. What does this mean? Which means that usually the image V is uh, given, but they try to predict uh, the pixel value for a new pixel, which is V star here. They call this predictive distribution. And they, then they can learn the Gaussian process uh, parameters uh, by maximum likelihood estimation. So that's uh, typically done in the machine learning um, domain. So here in our case, we are talking about uh, estimation or reconstruction problem. So our image V is not known, but we do have some information about the image, which is a projection B. And our, we try to compute the uh, conditional probability given the projection. Then here we preset our parameter because our V is not known, so we cannot uh, uh, use a maximum likelihood to estimate the parameter. But uh, we just keep in mind in the future, if we use some advanced simulation techniques such as uh, computational fluid dynamics, it's possible that uh, we can generate a lot of image and we can learn these parameters such as F and R here. But uh, in this work, this is not done. Here will be uh, more details about our Gaussian process. So we have a prior, which is a multivariate Gaussian distribution. And we have a likelihood. We have some projections past average. And then because everything's Gaussian, and uh, then everything becomes Gaussian. So when you compute the posterior, it's another Gaussian again. And in this case, this is a posterior mean, uh, and this is a posterior uh, covariance. So our solution to our first problem, the image reconstruction problem, would be we just use a posterior mean to be our solution. So this problem is solved. And then later on, we'll talk more about, uh, we're going to use this uh, posterior covariance for a second problem, which is a pass arrangement problem. So we are, we're going to focus on this part, this part. So for this pass arrangement optimization problem, uh, what's our parameters to be optimized, right? So we are talking about pass, how to arrange a pass. So every pass can be represented by four parameters which is basically the coordinates of two endpoints, like here and here, right? We want to optimize on these points. And then after these points you know, we can, can, we can determine the projection matrix. And our goal is to minimize this new term, which is, we call this reconstruction uncertainty. So, so this is uh, uh, defined as the average posterior pixel variance. So if you, Recall that um, this is our posterior covariance, and we take trees, which basically sum up all this diagonal variance of each pixel, and we take an average. So this is um, 
the objective function, we try to uh, minimize to achieve this optimization problem. And just keep in mind, sometimes the user may only be interested in some region of interest, such as indicated by this uh, green uh, rectangles here. So in that case, we can just simply replace the trees by uh, summing up pixels only within those areas. So this can be easily done. However, the problem is that uh, our object function is not differentiable with respect to our parameter theta, which are endpoint here, because we have to check whether there's an intersection or whether this contributes to our sample point. So we usually prefer gradient-based optimization because it's usually faster. So here we make some uh, approximation. So the idea is that for every pixel, we compute the distance between the pixel and each path. And then we convert such distance into the final weight of the project matrix by introducing this uh, explanation term. So just keep in mind the principle is the same as before. The closer the pixel to the path, the more impact this pixel will on this path. So after this kind of approximation, our objective function becomes differentiable uh, regarding the parameter. So that's pretty nice. So now we talk about uh, um, how can we do optimization with some constraints? So here we have some forbidden zones. So equivalently, equivalently, we can think we have some available regions in which you can only install the path uh, within these um, available regions. So each available region can be uh, specified by these parameters, which wall it's located, and also the uh, endpoint coordinates. Now if we have another, available region, we can form a region pair. So this will give you the constraint. Each path should be located because every path have to be located within a region pair. So this, this can be easily write down as a, a inequality, which is constraint used in our optimization problem. So now we have our final optimization problem, which is a constraint optimization problem. So in the first, part, we try to select the region pair. And in the second part, uh, we try to optimize the uh, uh, um, parameters by fixing those uh, region pairs. However, the complexity is very high because uh, we are basically talking about a combinatorial problem. And the first exponential term will be the cost to select region pairs because it's com you, there are many, many combinations. Second part will be the gradient descent cost. So directly optimize this problem is not uh, possible. So we switch to a uh, stochastic um, optimization. Here we use a simulated annealing. So just uh, in brief, this is a mechanism to accept update, even if it's worse. So in that case, uh, we can, this can help us to um, get out of those local optimal point. So this is the workflow of the um, op optimization. We are given a number of uh, paths we try to use, and also all those constraints, region pairs. First, we randomly assign region pairs to the paths, and we fix those region pairs and optimize the uh, um, um, parameters. Basically, this is this part. And then we apply the uh, simulated annealing criterion to see if we can accept this uh, update. And then we randomly perturb of our, our setup by randomly uh, select a pass and randomly assign a new region pair to this pass. So after the algorithm converges, we just output the, our best pass arrangement. So now the complexity dropped from this uh, explanation term to a, a polynomial term. Basically, the, this first explanation term is uh, replaced by a constant. The Q is usually the total number of iteration needed. It's usually smaller than a constant. So uh, we greatly reduce the complexity. So here's the test setup. Um, because we don't have any ground truth, um, there's nothing measurable inside the combustion zone. So we generate synthesized image. And uh, just keep in mind uh, to, uh, to reduce our complexity, we also uh, only reconstruct the 10 by 10 image. Then we use by cubic interpolation to render the original size image. And we consider three reconstruction algorithms, Tihanov, and uh, the edge break and our Gaussian process. For the pass arrangement method, we consider six of them. The first group is a fixed method. So orthogonal means that um, every pass has to be parallel to the wall. Diagonal 
means every path has to be parallel to the um, diagonal direction. And the multi-view means the combination of these two um, arrangements. Then we have some, another group of adaptive method. So first one is random. It's just randomly assigned the uh, path. And then we have our path optimization problem. So finally, we use this uh, uh, simplified version of our uh, objective function. So basically, the idea is that max mean means that every pixel should have a path nearby. And we try to minimize the maximum such distance. So this is a very simplified version of our objective function. So after we reconstruct our image, we compare this uh, with the ground truth using this uh, root mean squared error. So this is our uh, evaluation criteria. So here's the test results for the uh, image reconstruction. We also vary the number of paths between uh, five and 100. We compare these three algorithms. So each graph, in each graph, for, we fix the path uh, arrangement method. For example, this is a diagonal. This is our optimization method. Then we fix, uh, after we fix it, we just compare these three reconstruction algorithms. So I, as you can see that uh, our Gaussian process always produce the lowest error for each case. And uh, to improve, uh, if our results are statistically significant, we did a t-test between Gaussian process and the second performance, which is uh, t in this case. And if we set the, <coughs> the threshold of the RT, t uh, t-test uh, to be uh, 0 0.05, so the t-test failed only on four cases. So it succeeds on most cases. So we can see that in most cases, our results are statistically significant. So here we show some results for the pass optimization. So here is how the um, simulated leaning converges, right? And uh, if, we, if the number of uh, paths is very small, such as five, it just take uh, minutes to finish. But if we um, use the maximum number of paths, which is 100 here, it takes almost one day to finish. And also this curve shows you how the object function drops over time. So here we show you the final uh, pass arrangement of optimization results. So if we have five paths, right, the algorithm says that this is the best arrangement you can find. And if we increase uh, this to 10, and uh, it's almost like a star, right? So these two results make sense because um, uh, our image is symmetric. So ideally, the optimal result should also be symmetric because there is no way to think why a symmetric result will be make sense. But if we uh, use uh, m equal to 15 passes, the result be becomes a little bit asymmetric. So I think this is because uh, the problem becomes more complicated. So the simulated limit may not find the optimal point. So and for the optimal, uh, and also here shows the results of the image reconstruction. The bottom right figure is the ground truth. As you can see that uh, this image uh, has about four peaks here. If we use a very small number of paths, uh, we are not able to uh, reconstruct the image nicely. But as we increase the number of paths, we are going to get more and more accurate results. So, and uh, we also skip the results for the uh, path optimization with constraints um, because of the time constraint here. So our Algorithm is deployed to Siemens um, P3000 con control system. So there is a subsystem which is called combustion optimization. So this is the workflow. So our module is, uh, um, is right here. So we get some laser readings and then we reconstruct the image and we have different goals to optimize. So on the right side, this is one, one such goal. We want to make a balanced uh, oxygen distribution. On the left side, before apply the optimizer, the bal it's not balanced because the bottom part is um, higher. Now after the feedback loop control, we get a more balanced result. So that's how our algorithm can help to provide feedback to the controller to improve the um, efficiency. So this is summary. So we propose an um, algorithm to tackle two problems. One is the image reconstruction and one is path arrangement optimization. Both use Gaussian process. So I have one final comment which just came to my mind two days ago when I attended a session in interactive machine learning. Actually, what we are doing right here is very similar to active learning because if you are familiar with active learning, you try to select some unknown, unlabeled points which are very uncertain. But if you know the label of those points, that will greatly reduce your uncertainty and help you 
class, uh, classifier to make better prediction. So we are basically doing the same thing. We want to reduce the uncertainty here. OK, thank you. We have time for a quick question. So in your path optimization, does simulated annealing always converge? Uh, we just check um, if after, let's, let's say, 100 uh, runs, mm -hmm. if the value does not improve, we just say it then converts. It okay. Yeah. All right. Let's thank our speaker once again. Okay. Thank you.